Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of the K Digital's podcast, where we dive into artists, their origin, their style, and their process. Joining me today is Wendy Smith. How are you doing today, Wendy? I'm good. How about you? Doing well. Just just being dad, trying to hang in the cold weather, just enjoying San Diego, the the usual. Fantastic. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. Well, we've been like kind of connected on Instagram for a long time now, but I don't think I've ever actually had a conversation with you. So this is the first. Exactly. The joys of Instagram, right? I feel like you're always, you know, people, you know, so many people, and then you finally get to meet them and interact. And it's really cool. Well, it's, it's funny because like, um, like I, I don't engage as much, but I, I see everybody's stories. I like I track everything. And so there are times where like, I'll like, go to a shoot with a model. I'm like, oh, I have a question about this one thing that happened like five months ago on your story. Yeah. And they know exactly what I'm talking about, which is weird to be like, yeah, I watch you, but I don't know who you are. Like, we don't know each other, but I know everything that's going on in your life based <laughs> off Instagram. Um, well, cool. Well, Wendy, it's the way I like to kick off every podcast is to ask the guests to define themselves. Um, you know, some people are photographers, but when I say they're photographers, like, no, I, I don't see myself that way. I see myself this way. How do you see yourself? I definitely see myself as a photographer, but um, I truly enjoy the entire creative process, the creative directing mm -hmm. process. I love styling. I love all of it. Um, but definitely at the end of the day, I am a photographer for sure. So, mm -hmm. yeah, like if you look at your work, it's there's definitely like styling involved. Um, <laughs> so what what makes you get so involved versus just like telling them, I want you to wear this and I'll see you when you show up? Well, I feel like for me, the process comes from the concept. So, I mean, any, you know, we all, we live in San Diego. We have so many beautiful places we could go to. We could go just down to the beach, you know, bring a bathing suit, let's go to the beach and take photos. Yeah. And of course get fantastically beautiful photos. But I like to really dig into what's behind that. I'm really inspired by a lot of film, movies, cinema, things like that. And I really like to come up with that creative concept and then watch the whole thing come to life with styling, with the really, really taking a lot of time thinking about location and just all the elements that come into it and then working creatively with all the members of the team. Yeah. And then what, um, because your stuff's very like specific, it looks more, yeah, more costume based, right? Yeah. Why, <laughs> why that versus just doing the bikini shot at the beach? Um, I feel like I've just always really enjoyed fashion. I've always really enjoyed style. Um, in my much, much younger years, I was actually mm -hmm. trying to get into acting and different stuff like that. So I do oh. have, to, I went to theater school. I have a background in the theater. So I think there's, mm -hmm. a, that comes along with that where you put on your costume and you become the character. And yeah. I think I'm trying to do more than just capture a beautiful woman at the beach or, cause I do mostly work with, models and fashion photography and stuff like that not as much you know family or wedding I've done some mm. it's not my favorite and yeah I, I do <laughs> more enjoy fashion photography so over the years that's what I've mostly stuck with so I feel like by focusing on maybe costume or fashion or design it just brings in that extra element that makes you stop and want to look at the image it makes you mm. say well you know what like that's not just another pretty face but it's a pretty face and there's a concept behind it or there's a story or there's something that the artists are trying to tell us. And that's what I love. Mm -hmm. Do you, um, when you're putting together shoots, do you like start with the concept and then like get the shoot room or like, do you kind of get a, a model and a conversation going, okay, let's figure out what works. You know, most, it can go back and forth these days, mostly mm -hmm. concept first. I have an endless number of ideas on my Pinterest boards that I mm -hmm. spend a lot of time. <laughs> too much time putting together and then I will pick and choose models from there but then often there's just the, I'll meet a model that I want to work with or I'll see someone on Instagram and I'll just be inspired by their look and I'll reach out and be like hey I'd love to work with you uh, I'm often open I'm like if you have ideas I'd love to help you bring that to life or if not here's my Pinterest and here's a bunch yeah. of ideas that I have because I feel like sometimes too it's really fun to reach out to a creative want to work with them and then be like, is there something you've always wanted to bring to life? And then yeah. it can be a little bit of a challenge as well, because it might be a different type of styling or a different type of something. And then watching that come together from the back end is really fun. Yeah, I know. I get that. Because like, um, usually when people reach out to me, it's like they kind of already have their concept and I'm kind of just 
in charge of getting that. But like, uh, I got a friend like Cheyenne who she'll come up with like, I have this crazy concept. Here's all these photos. I'm like, oh, I have no idea how we're going to do that. But let's figure it out. Like, it's a challenge and it's fun. Exactly. Know? I love, I love the creative process too of if a piece needs to be created for, you know, the mm-hmm. shoot or, you know, let's figure out a way to, like, right now I'm figuring out a way to turn someone into moss, let's say. So we're, you know, taking okay. our mitt, we're going to be placing moss on it, things like that. So, just finding ways to work with materials that you have always within, you know, the budget that you have as well. You yeah. Know, wish that could always be a little bit bigger, but um, definitely yeah. always been able to make it work. I love thrifting. I've always been mm-hmm. a thrifting queen and I like the hunt for those specific, like perfect garments to wear. So that's another piece of it that I love. Yeah. On that kind of piggybacking off that. So you said thrifting queen, um, but on your Instagram, it says location queen. What, what does that mean? Well, the the location queen started as a joke and it just sort okay. of followed me through. Um, I mostly shoot on location. Um, I definitely can shoot in studio. I just mm. don't do it often. I'm not mm. super inspired by studio. I really, I love shooting in natural light mm. and I love finding really interesting and different locations that mm. can be used to help continually tell the story. Um, I really 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 love abandoned places i think they're beautiful i think they Mm. are just art within themselves and i've tried to find every single (laughs) abandoned place in the greater san diego area um unfortunately we are not as lucky as friends on the east coast or in the south who do tend to have Mm. a lot more abandoned places just due to the amount of time they've been around yeah but um Mm. i'm always looking for new and abandoned places to shoot in because i just think it juxtaposing something that's so beautiful, like a really beautiful gown from a designer friend. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, an abandoned location, it always brings a different era and like a different mystery to it. So, Mm -hmm. but the location queen thing was just a joke because people are always like asking me, where, where are you? Where did you shoot this? Where is that? Mm. Where is that? Constant, constant. And I try to be as, I share, I share and I don't. Yeah. (laughs) Somewhere, honestly, I've spent so much time finding them and I don't want them to get overrun because that's the other thing with abandoned places. Mm -hmm. Since they are very uh, few and far between in Southern California, once they get found out, then Mm -hmm. use them a lot and then the cops start coming. And I know several places um, you can't go to anymore because they have been kind of known. Yeah. Over and yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be hard because crave you want to share, right? You don't want to be like too gatekeepy, but like, uh, <laughs> yeah. to, if I tell you, then we're not gonna be able to do it anymore. Exactly. Yeah, yeah because yeah. especially when it comes to abandoned and that type of stuff, there's a, a little light trespassing that may occur occasionally, you know. And so yeah. you have to be very careful and make sure that you're not, you know, spending copious amounts of time there or bringing lots of lighting on location. Like, I think that's one reason that I can get away with a lot of what I do. Is mm. I do not usually bring any lighting other than maybe a speed light on location with me. I use mm. the natural light that's there. Bring my camera, bring as little wardrobe as we can for the model. We're in, we're out, you know, and leave no trace, of course, and add nothing to it. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so with all that said, what it, what are your goals with photography? Is this just like an outlet to do for fun? Are you trying to 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 be like full time professional with it? That's a great question. Um, I go back and forth. I right now it is definitely a side hustle and a an outlet for creativity. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a very established job that I've had for many many years. I work in special yeah. ed, and so it's never been like oh um, you know oh my gosh I needed to pay my bills. And I think that's where it's always been a little nerve wracking for me because mm-hmm. when you walk away from a very established career yeah. in the arts, it's like yeah you know am I gonna be able to do this can I be as selective as I can be I know I wouldn't be able to be as selective with the clientele that I shoot with currently if I mm-hmm. were to do it full time but I mean if you know Vogue were to come knocking and was like you want to come shoot I would obviously mm-hmm. I would love to be able to be a professional photographer creative but mm-hmm. it's, there's you know we live in San Diego and there's bills to be paid so right now I definitely yep. use it as a as a creative outlet. And I think I'm lucky in that way where I can still do it, find love and passion in it, and then also not have it become that thing that is also a stressor around money. So. Yeah, no, I get it. That's why it's like, uh, you're saying like, oh, weddings and maternity shoots. I don't know, but it's like, 
like I I post all model stuff of mine, but like on the side, I'm doing more than just that because you know it helps. <laughs> but no, I get that. Yeah, um, I mean, I definitely. And again, no, absolutely no shade. I think wedding photography is beautiful. All photography yeah. is beautiful. Um, it's just personal preferences of mine, and I think also just some of the stress that goes along with say wedding photography mm. or family photography. You know, wrangle like. I work with kids all day for my nine to five. So then going yeah. and raising children in a photo shoot type of thing, you know, it's just not where my current artistic priorities are, but yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Um, to, to kind of, to a little bit of hard left. One thing I was always curious is um, how did you get involved with the SD photo squad? Um, they, I had just sort of heard about them and then I went to a meetup and mm-hmm. Bayani and Iman had seen my work before <laughs> and they were super excited that I was there and then had just asked if I wanted to help out. So mm-hmm. I helped out with the postings here and there. And I help out, um, you know, when uh, I helped put together a meetup a few months ago and I do what I can to help. because I think it's really cool to have the community and to bring people in and to share the mm-hmm. knowledge we have. How much work goes into coordinating a meetup? I feel like even just recording a shoot with one person is can be a lot. <laughs> yeah. so how do you do it with uh, like 50? <laughs> there's a good amount of coordination. I mean, what it mostly is, is just, you know, once we've decided on a date and figured out that what type of shoot we want to, you know, meet up we want to have, then it just becomes mm-hmm. publicizing it. And then more becoming just the point person and the coordinator for the day of, you know, mm-hmm. you, you could say, oh, we're going to meet here, but then realizing that, directions to there and how do you get there and making sure everyone can find it and then making sure that you're someplace where a large group can meet and things like that but mm-hmm. I think it's it's almost easier in some ways than a specific photo shoot though because you are just opening it up and you're saying come on out let's be creative this is the idea or the concept that we're having in the location you know there's going to be photographers models it's kind of up to you to go in there and meet people it's however you know forward you feel like being if that's how mm. much you get to shoot where when you're putting together your own specific photo shoot it's like you are the photographer that day and you are the model that day and if someone bails mm. them, then the photo shoot goes down the <laughs> yeah so I guess it's it's kind of 50 50 um but they have their they both have their challenges yeah yeah I need to go to one because I when I was in LA and I was like first starting out like I used to go to meetups all the time for like conquer LA and these groups oh and yeah then, I've um, yeah. And then um when we were to San Diego, right? Like I feel like, oh yes, you first okay, well, cool. that's that's the community of this place, you know, like I found the page and all that. But every time like you guys have a meetup, it's like, oh, I have to be with my family at the time, or oh I had work at that time. Like Yeah. And, and like I think there was um there was there, like a re- well, I don't know how recent it was, but there's a beach one um that was gonna like, oh cool. I can do that one. And I was on my calendar and everything, and then we had to go visit family and like out in the bay, and, like, ah, I, didn't I had that. that one. So I I was just gonna say I only probably make it to maybe half of the events that SD Photo Squad okay. has. That's also why there's, gosh, like six I want to say of us who kind of mediate, take turns posting, take turns running stuff because no one, you know, having that free time all the time is really tough. So the the more the yeah. merrier, kind of for us, and we have a, a nice crew of people who work to keep that page going yeah you guys are consistent and i think that's that's what makes it a community versus like because there's other pages in san diego right but like you'll look and the last post was like last year april 2021 and yeah. like before that post was like two more months so it's like okay someone's actually yeah we have a group something. chat and they stay on it and they they have to remind me i say if you don't literally <laughs> tag me in the group chat and say wendy it is your day to do this i will forget because that's just who i am but yeah. they do and i do it so <laughs> mm-hmm when um to kind of take it back when did you get started with photography um you know i've it's corny to say but i've always loved photography i mean i was always i always had a camera in high school i always had copious disposable cameras like i would go Mm -hmm. on trips and plan oh i'm gonna have my black and white you know camera for these shots and just things like that you know that i i didn't realize at the time was me Mm -hmm. loving photography as much as i did i just thought i just like to have memories and keep you know that Mm -hmm. close Mm-hmm. And then um, about 10 years ago, I got my first DSLR as a birthday present for my dad. And he's like, just, I was going to Hawaii and he's like, go take some pictures, have some fun. And mm-hmm. having the DSLR really changed it. I was like, whoa, I can actually 
yeah. make these settings and change these lenses and do all of that. And I thought I was just going to use it for, for fun, for landscape photography, because maybe outdoors and I love landscape photography. It got me back into photography. Mm-hmm. But then a couple years after that, I had the opportunity to uh, shoot a couple of models in LA, just do connections that I had. I was so incredibly nervous. <laughs> it was, I was like, yeah. oh, okay, I'll go shoot this. Part. You know, you don't. But um, those opportunities went really well, and they just sort of, you know, pushed me forward into realizing that working with models and working with uh, people in photography was what I was going to want to do because I could then combine my love of fashion, cinema, art, mm-hmm. and all of that into photography. So it's been about eight years now, but I've been shooting people. For sure. Mm-hmm. Do do you still do landscape photography? Yeah. I mean, and I really, everyone's like, post more of your landscapes, post more, mm-hmm. you know, and I really should. <laughs> I just yeah. get very, very uh, anal about curating my Instagram. Yeah. Spend a little too much time obsessing about curating my Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely, everywhere I travel, I'm always taking landscape photography. Um, mm-hmm. I'll just go down to, you know, stressful day, go down to the beach, unwind, take pictures of the sunset. So it's. Yeah. yeah. Is that. um kind of why you like to shoot outdoors too with models just like combining the both I think so yeah I um I just always love being outdoors I'm an outdoorsy girl I grew up in the mountains and I just I love plants as you can see (laughs) I love just uh nature and greenery and I think that yeah being able to combine finding that beautiful location and then that the beautiful model the beautiful garment everything and just putting it all together and I think too, finding those locations, those really cool and specific locations are what can take your concept from just something on paper to really being real. Like, for example, a lot of what I do with my uh, Halloween series that I do, I get real excited for Halloween and I do 31 days of Halloween every year. And um, that kind of started when I found a location out past Alpine called Dead Dolly Lane. It's a fence that has all kinds of dolls hanging from it, doll parts, arms, oh. head, full dolls, everything. It's fantastic if you're into the macabre. It's, yeah. I, I thought it was beautiful and I loved it. And so I created a shoot around it, my Dead Dolly Lane series, um, where we made the model look very Baroque and it, as a doll and uh, Becca Church, actually she used to live here in San Diego. She's now in New York mm-hmm. pursuing her modeling dreams, but she was the model for that one. and. It was when that concept came together that it really, really propelled me. I was like, wow, this is what we can do. We can find this really cool place and bring an entire story to life through still images. And I just thought it was really cool. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's cool, right? When you hit that, like, that spark, you're like, oh, I could take this to the next level. Like, there's a lot more than I realized, like, yeah. that I could, that my capabilities were. Yeah. So, what about when it's not Halloween? The, like <laughs> I'm still doing crazy. Halloween stuff. I'm still doing like I still do weird stuff. Like I'm doing my creepy Christmas right now. I like uh, you know, just a couple of horror <laughs> shoots around Christmas themes that I think are fun. Um mm-hmm. I will I think there's always a little bit of like a that darker cinematic feel I like to draw into things, but other than that, it's just coming up with different concepts and trying to find ways to bring what I have in my head to life. And Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know that like so often we'll have an idea and we'll shoot it and it's great. It's a great photo shoot, but it still isn't exactly what you wanted or exactly what you thought or, you know, the day, the light wasn't right or the day wasn't right or this or that. And so I'm always like, I feel like I'm always pushing forward to the next to try to Mm -hmm. finally bring it to life. And so that's. Yeah. Yeah. I get anxiety on every shoot, like especially when it's a client shoot, because it will be the same thing where I tell people, the first 20 minutes is literally just set up, warming up, just kind of getting to know each other. But literally give it to the last 10 to 5 minutes and we'll get all the shots. But it's it's, it's just, what like for me, that's just the process. And it, every time we get it, but leading up to that point, I'm like, oh, this is the time I'm going to fail. This is the time the client's going to want to refund. Like, oh, every no. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> every time. Yeah, especially with clients. You're just like, okay, I got to. And then you there's just with – with client shoots, there's, I feel like there is so much more unknown as opposed to model shoots, especially if it's a model that you've worked with before. Because I do, like, yeah, you know, you I love to build up the model base of uh, 
people that I know for a fact that like I can go to and we're going to absolutely crush it. Yeah. That's, and that is one specific type, but it is when you have those client shoots and you don't know what's going to happen. The person isn't a model or they have never been in front of the camera before. And then you're able to create images that make them not only love themselves and love everything about it. It, those are the really big successes. So. So um, I know you're in time. So to, to wrap it up, I wanted to ask, you know, if someone that's been doing this for, you know, as long as you've been doing it, what's some advice you could give to like a new photographer coming out that would probably help them you know, do really uh, well in the beginning? I tell everybody, people that I talk to all the time who are up and coming, um, just shoot everything, try everything, bring your camera everywhere if you can find reasons to use your camera every single day. When I was starting, especially I'd say maybe three years in, um, I was doing five or six shoots a week. I was a total maniac. <laughs> I was honestly, I, I look back yeah, and I, I don't really know how I did that, but yeah. I'm somebody that when I decide I want to do something, I, I do it. Mm -hmm. And um, I accredit so much of where I am now to that very fact that I have done just a a stupid number of shoots really <laughs> and every single time I learned something I still do you know I'm completely self-taught I've never taken photography classes I've just learned how to use my camera I've used YouTube and books to learn how to edit and I'm still learning a hundred percent of the time and I feel like you're just never going to especially with a medium like photography you're never going to learn it unless you have that camera in your hand and you're like, oh, oh my gosh. So that's how, you know, F-stop and shutter speed work together. And oh my gosh, I had my ISO way too high. I blew that out, my bad. You know, you, you just need to keep trying and don't be afraid to reach out and ask people to shoot. That was the other thing that once I got over the hump of like reaching out to people on Instagram and just being like, hey, would you be interested in a TFP, you know, a time for print or a collaboration? Uh, just understanding that as long as you're on the same page with your collaboration and understanding, you will you let them know like the number of photos you expect to have, you know, make sure I would say always have a contract, even if it's just TFP, you just want to make sure that you don't get yourself into hot water. But um, if you don't ask, you don't know. And it's, you'll rarely get, at least I find rarely people will be like, absolutely no, I don't want to do this. You might not hear back, which is whatever. But most of the time you're going to find people being like, yeah, let's give this a shot. And that's how you get better just by trying. Yeah. I wish I knew that when I started, because when I originally started, I wanted to do bottle stuff. Like I just kind of knew, um, but I was just shy. Like I'm still kind of shy, but it was a point where it was just like, I don't know how to even ask someone. I think I asked like a few times and it didn't work. And I was like, oh, maybe I like looking back, I was like, my approach was probably all wrong. Um, but it isn't until I can understand it. I kind of leaned into it. I'm like, oh, this isn't that hard. I don't know why I overthought it. Um, 10 years ago, that would probably be nice, but you know, no, absolutely. it happened eventually. And then also if you, if you do see meetups, either <laughs> SD photo squad or any of the amazing groups that are here in San Diego, that's another really great way because everyone is there already knowing that they're there to do a photo shoot. So if you're not quite ready to reach out to somebody on Instagram, you've never talked to before, go to the meetups bring your camera and just, you will find people to shoot. And, you know, again, just make sure that if you are setting up these shoots, let people know that you're learning. Let people know, the, I may only be able to have five viable images for you, but I would love to have this. This is my idea and let's go for it. And you never know until you try, so. Yeah, that's just what it is. Like, I think it was, uh, was it Cinzia? Uh, he's another local photographer. Uh, he said that like I the the thing he's learned is um it's it's what is it getting better isn't I forgot how it went the way he positioned it was like you still take the same amount of photos every shoot it's just more of those photos are better right yeah. but that only happens the more you shoot so you just have to keep shooting I'm like oh that yeah that makes sense I I get where he's coming from with that but yeah. Cool. Well, hey, Wendy, thanks for joining me today. Where can people follow your work and see your photos? Thank you so much. It was great to officially meet you. I can't wait to, we need to make sure that we interface some more. So, yeah, of course. Uh, where can people uh, follow your work? Okay. You can find me on Instagram at the Wendy 28 um, or I, my website, wendywsmithphoto.com. Mm -hmm. 
and Facebook, Wendy W. Smith photo. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm out for there. Sure. Find me. <laughs> for sure. Well, hey everybody, thanks for everyone that joined today. I'm going to go ahead and stop the and I'll see y'all soon. Bye. Bye.